27 violin bowing techniques with examples and symbols. If we haven't met, hi, I'm Megan. I'm a violinist and teacher currently based in New Jersey. I've been playing the violin for over 20 years. I have my bachelor's and master's degrees in violin performance, and I'm a Suzuki trained teacher. If you're enjoying my videos, please make sure you subscribe to my channel and check out my flexible and affordable comprehensive learning program, Learn Violin Online, which is always linked in the description. Enrollment is opening up in November, so make sure you apply to be one of the first to know and snag your spot. In this video, I'll be going over 27 of the most common bowing techniques and terms. I've also created a free PDF chart with all of the techniques, their definitions, and their musical symbols, which you can download totally free in the description. Bowing technique number one is détaché. Détaché is the most basic violin bowing technique and likely the one that you will first learn. Détaché simply means to change bow directions on every note, but still bow smoothly. The name is a little bit misleading because détaché kind of sounds like detach, which would make you think short or separated, but it actually just means change bow directions. Détaché doesn't require any special marking. If there is no markings over the notes, then you would play détaché. It might sound something like this. Bowing technique number two is legato. So legato, I feel like, um, is the bow stroke that I get the most um, hate on. Um, because it's very misunderstood, I think. And, um, you know, as someone who went through six years of music school, who's read a bunch of violin pedagogy books, has been literally taught these bow strokes by multiple different teachers, I can firmly tell you that legato specifically means notes that are underneath a slur. Okay, so a slur is like the curvy line that you see above these notes, and it means that you play all of those notes in the same bow direction. When performing legato or notes underneath the slurs, each note should get the same amount of bow speed, and it should sound very smooth. So legato is only slurred notes, I promise you. Take it from me. If you mean that you want the notes to be played smoothly, but you're changing bow directions, that is day to shay. Come for me in the comments all you want, but I know this is correct from my years of musical education. Legato means notes that are slurred. So legato might sound like this. So I was slurring my notes, but keeping my bow speed even, so all of the notes sounded the same. Bowing technique number three is staccato. So staccato means detached in Italian. And staccato means that there should be a slight space between each note. In my experience, staccato is the bow stroke that's mostly misunderstood by beginners because they think that you have to do something crazy or something fancy with your hand in order to play staccato. While that might be the case with up and bow staccato, which we'll get to later, that's not the case with just regular staccato. To perform regular staccato, all you have to do is stuff your bow between each note. Staccato can be done with any amount of bow and in any part of the bow, but it's most often done in the middle or lower half using just a little bit of bow. And staccato is notated by dot over or under the notes. Staccato would sound like this. So you heard a clear separation or a clear space between each note. Bowing technique number four is tenuto. You can think of tenuto as the opposite of staccato. So tenuto notes should be held for their full value, but still have a slight separation between them. Tenuto is notated by lines over or under the notes, and tenuto notes should be played longer than staccato notes, but not as smoothly as they touche. Tenuto might sound like this. longer than staccato, but not as long as détaché. I often find that tenuto um, happens a lot when you are slowing down as well. That's just been my experience, um, especially in orchestral repertoire. Bow stroke number five is portato. So portato is notated by a slur and lines over the notes, and it's kind of 
a combination of legato and tenuto. So when you're playing portato, all of the notes are going to be on the same bow direction, but there's going to be a slight space in between each note. The way that you do this is by changing your bow speed. So at the beginning of the note, you use a faster bow speed, and then you allow the bow to slow down, which creates that illusion of a space. You don't have to stop your bow 100% of the way between each note. You don't want it to be like a clear space. You want it to be a little bit more ambiguous. So again, my bow never fully stopped, but it sounded like there was a little bit of space between each note because of the way I used my bow speed. Bow technique number six is pizzicato. So pizzicato just means to pluck the string um, rather than to bow the string. So there's several different ways that you can do pizzicato. If you have a extended pizzicato passage, you can put your bow kind of in a fist like this, put your thumb on the side of the fingerboard and then use your index finger over the fingerboard to pluck the notes. And you want to pluck the string as upward as you can to create the most ringing or resonant tone. If you're switching quickly between arco, which is bowed notes, what's the next one, and pizzicato, then you're going to want to keep your bow hold pretty much the same and just lift your index finger up. And again, use that finger to pitz or to pluck over the fingerboard. This will require a bit of pinky strength, so if you feel like you're your hand is falling like that or your pinky is falling off you need to take that pinky to the gym bow technique number seven is what i just kind of alluded to it's arco and all it means is to play with the bow so you'll see this after a section of pizzicato and it just means go back to using the bow bow technique number eight is punta d'arco did you like my accent so punta d'arco just means that the note should be played at the tip of the bow this creates a softer sound Bow technique number nine, you can think of it as the opposite of punta d'arco, and it's all talon. Now, don't ask me why punta d'arco is in Italian and all talon is in French. I don't know, but <laughs> that's just how it is. So, all talon means to play at the frog, and this creates a very strong tone. A lot of times when you see all talon notes, they'll be marked all down bow, and you'll do a little retake in between. Bow technique number 10 is brush stroke. So brush stroke is arguably the easiest off the string violin bow stroke and the one that you'll likely learn first. Brush stroke works best around the middle or middle lower part of the bow. Brush stroke is an active bow stroke, which means that you are actively controlling the bow as it comes off and on the string. Brush stroke is notated by dots over the notes. And to perform brush stroke, start with your bow slightly above the string and then make kind of a U shape with your hand and allow your bow to drop onto the string at the bottom of the U. As you can see, I was very actively controlling that. I was controlling each movement of the bow and I was using kind of a bigger muscle. I was using mostly my elbow. As we get into the more advanced off the string bow strokes that won't be the case with bow stroke number 11 we are moving into the more intermediate bowing techniques and bow stroke 11 is spiccato so spiccato is um, another off the string bowing technique that again should be performed in the middle or middle lower part of the bow spiccato is either partially or entirely passive depending on the speed and what I mean by that is you, the player, are not making the bow bounce. You're staying relaxed and you're moving your hand in such a way that allows the bow to bounce on its own. The way you're going to perform spiccato is very similar to brush stroke. Start with your bow off the string, create a little U shape with your hand. And as you can tell, I'm using a little bit smaller muscle. So if this is brush stroke, I even have a little bit of my shoulder movement. Um, this is spiccato. So same basic motion, just on a smaller scale. In order for spiccato and any of the more advanced 
off the string bow strokes to work, your hand has to be extremely relaxed. Bow technique number 12 is a bow staccato. So a bow staccato is a series of notes played all within one bow with space in between them. When you find a bow staccato in repertoire, there's usually like 20, 30, 40 of them on a bow. To perform up a staccato, you're gonna start in the upper half with your bow. And what I like to say is you're going to pinch the string with your index finger, which means that you're gonna apply some weight or some pressure into your index finger. And then as soon as you draw the bow, so as soon as you move the bow, you're gonna release that weight. What this does is it creates an accent at the beginning of the note, but then a ringing or resonant tone at the end of the note. When you are playing 20, 30, 40 notes on a bow, you need each of them to be accented so they're clearly heard. I'm gonna be honest with you, there's not a ton of orchestral or of solo repertoire that uses upbow staccato. There's definitely some famous um, upbow staccato pieces, but it's not like so prolific that you absolutely have to master it. When I was in school, I always heard, um, you know, you're either good at up bow staccato or you aren't. And if you're not, you just don't play those pieces. You know what I mean? So technique number 13 is down bow staccato. This is the exact same thing as up bow staccato, except you're just moving your on a down bow rather than an up bow. I personally find down bow staccato to be harder than up bow staccato because um, you're working against gravity. A really good exercise to practice both up and down bow staccato is creature number four. Bow technique number 14 is colenio. So colenio means to play with the stick of the bow, and it's most often found in orchestral repertoire. So to perform colenio, you're going to tilt the stick of the bow towards you and the hair away from you, which is the opposite of what we usually do, right? When we're playing and we want to tilt our bow hair, we tilt the stick away from us. But for colenio, we're going to tilt it towards us, and I'm tilting it very far so that my stick is coming in contact with the strings. Usually when you're performing colenio, your bow is gonna bounce as well. And as you can see, it creates a percussive sound. Bow technique number 15 is sol casto, which just means to play over the fingerboard. This creates a very soft, light, and airy sound. Again, mostly found in orchestral music. Now, when you're playing over the fingerboard, that doesn't mean you wanna be here, <laughs> okay? It's basically just right here um, along the edge of the fingerboard. You find this a lot in like French music, think like WC, Rebel, they use Sol Casto a lot. Bow stroke number 16 is Ponticello. This is the opposite of Sol Casto. It means to play over the bridge. It creates a scratchy and unclear sound. And again, it's most often used in orchestral repertoire. I can't think of a single time that it comes across in solo repertoire, but it could be wrong. If you know, let me know. So basically you're just gonna play right over the bridge. And that's the kind of sound it creates. Bow technique number 17 is double stops. So double stops involve playing two strings or two notes at once. The most common misconception, I guess, when it comes to double stops is that since you're playing two strings, you need to press down harder on your bow, which is not the case. If anything, you want to press down lighter on the bow so you don't get a super scratchy sound. When you're playing double stops, your bow arm needs to be balanced in between the two strings. So for example, if I'm here on E, I'm here on A, I wanna be right about there for my double stop. And when I'm moving my hand, I need to make sure to move it in a straight line. If it's waffling up and down, I'm not gonna hear both notes sound continuously. Technique number 18 are chords. Chords are sometimes also called triple stops or quadruple stops, and a chord is playing three or four notes at once. When you're playing chords, um, especially if you're playing four note chords, it's nearly, if not completely, impossible to play all four notes at the exact same time. So, what you're going to do is start on the two bottom notes. You're going to use very little bow on those notes and then quickly roll your bow over to the top notes. <laughs> So I'm not playing all four notes right at the exact same time, but I'm playing them very close to one another, so it almost sounds like I'm playing them at the same time. Bow technique number 18 is bowed tremolo. Tremolo means to rapidly repeat a note as many times as possible within the given note value. It's usually done in the upper half of the bow, and again, it's most often used as an effect in orchestral music. 
tremolo might sound something like this. When performing tremolo, especially in an orchestral setting, the whole point is not to be playing at the same time as your neighbor. There's no specific amount of times you have to bow or play the note as many times as you can. Bow technique number 19 is martelet. So martelet means hammered and it means to play the notes with a very percussive articulation. Notes should be detached, so they should have a little bit of space between them, but should have a clear or heavy accent at the beginning. The way that you perform martelet is extremely similar, if not the same, as to how you perform a bow staccato. The difference with martelet is that you can obviously use more bow and you can hold on to the note longer after you've released the weight. Number 20 is sustained martelet. So sustained martelet is a bow stroke that requires the note to be held out for its full value after the initial accent or initial attack of the martelet stroke. So essentially it's just a longer martelet. Bow technique number 21 is marcato. The term marcato comes from the Italian word for marked. Unlike martelet, which is a bow stroke, marcato is simply an articulation. That means to play the notes louder than the notes around it. And you can do this in a number of different ways. You can do it with weight, you can do it with bow speed, you can do it with vibrato. Marcato is more left up to the interpretation of the performer. Going into the advanced bow strokes now, I think my numbers got messed up along the way here. Um, this is bow stroke number 23, sautier. So sautier is a bow stroke where it sounds like an off-the-string bow stroke, but it's not. So the hair of the bow stays completely on the string, and the stick bounces up and down. Sauté is a completely passive bow stroke, which means that the bow does all the work for you, as long as you get out of the way. So since staccato, staccato, brush stroke, sauté, they're all marked with dots over the notes how do you know which one to use? Well, it's pretty simple. It's, determ um, it's determined by the tempo of the piece. So for slower passages or pieces, we do staccato, and then brush stroke, and then spiccato, and then sautier. So sautier is the fastest. Bow stroke number 24 is ricochet. Ricochet is another passive violin bow stroke, mostly done in the upper half of the bow. To perform ricochet, you're going to throw your bow onto the string and allow it to ricochet or to bounce by itself. Bow stroke number 25 is flying staccato. So flying staccato is a cross between a bow staccato and flying spiccato, which we'll talk about next. In flying staccato, the bow leaves the strings between martelet notes during a single bow stroke. This is a semi-passive bow stroke because you must control the height and frequency of the bounce. I lost count again, but we have two left. <laughs> Flying spiccato is a bowing technique that involves playing a series of spiccato notes in the same direction, most often on an up bow. Flying spiccato works best in the middle of the bow. And I'm gonna put a video of Hilary Hahn playing it. And the final bowing technique is chops. So chopping is a percussive bowing technique that is most often used in fiddle music. To perform a chop, you're going to heavily drop your bow down onto the string, and it's usually followed by a rest. I'm gonna put a video of somebody else chopping up here because I am not a fiddle player. <laughs> Those are the 27 most common violin bowing techniques. Don't forget to download your free PDF chart with all of the definitions and musical symbols. And leave a comment. What bowing technique do you find the hardest? For me, it's definitely like those, those off the straight ones, like ricochet, the flying spiccato, all that good stuff. Thank you so much for watching. Please make sure you subscribe before you go, and don't forget to check out Learn Violin Online.